Morning and welcome to um, the first and, and perhaps the last of my lockdown lectures as I'm going to call them. Uh, how to make butter. I mentioned on Facebook last night I was going to make some butter today and a couple of people said we'll make a video out of it so um, so we are doing um, perhaps inadvisedly. Um, now we're using an app that we haven't used before so uh, hopefully this is going to come to you in gorgeous high quality audio and sound. Uh, I certainly hope so anyway. Uh, but we'll see. There was an in-app purchase for, for higher quality video uh, and I, I was going to do a, a sort of crowdfunding page for it but in the end I just stumped up the 199 myself. So uh, hopefully it should look and sound at least okay. Um, but we'll see. Now, how to make butter. First thing we need to do is very quickly just talk about the equipment that you're going to need because you are going to need a very small amount of equipment. The first thing is uh, you need either a stand mixer or you need a decent food processor. A really cheap food processor you may well burn a motor out on doing this but uh, a stand mixer is, is your best bet if you can get one. Um, two two pieces of advice if you're going to buy a stand mixer either a do what we did walk into curries the day that um, they're on a 50% offer that you didn't realize was on and buy one on the spot at half the price or uh, or steal one now if you're going to steal one get your car really really close to the entrance to the store probably reverse it in so that your boot is as near to the door as possible have the boot open have somebody else obviously with the the, the engine running these things are bulky, they're heavy, they're quite hard to run out the store with, I believe, and, and you do tend to upset the security guards as well. So if you're going to steal one, just think it through. Um, but probably buying one, I, I would say, is best. Um, so you, you really do need some, something fairly heavy duty to make butter. It's going to take five, five, six minutes to, to churn and... Um, the only other alternative really is to behave like a sort of um, 18th century peasant, um, probably go and sit on your lawn and pop your double cream, which is what you're going to be using, in some sort of container and just shake it. A uh, container like this one here, I'm going to use for something else later, and just shake it until um, butter appears. Now my, my mum got me to do this once as a kid, I think to keep me quiet, um, and we, we ended up timing me making butter with, with a calendar frankly. Um, so the tossing it around in a box until butter appears is, is really your worst option. I, I wouldn't bother. Now, um, a couple of other bits of, of equipment that you're going to need. You're going to need uh, a spatula, a flexible spatula. It will just help you. And then if we just turn around over here, a couple of little bits. You're going to need some salt. I use two different sorts of salt. Um, in, in our butter. If you don't like salt, don't put it in. I mean, unsalted butter is, is fairly revolting to eat, but you know, if you're determined not to enjoy yourself, then don't put any salt in, that's fine. Um, obviously, if your doctors advise you, you know, you have another grain of salt and you're gonna die, then take his advice, not, not mine, and, and really don't put any salt in. Um, the other thing, you can get yourself Amazon, five pounds, uh, little butter paddles for, for shaping the butter at the end. Now you can get by without these, of course you can. Uh, you can improvise, um, you can find stuff lying around the house that you, you know you can shape the butter with. You can do it by hand to be honest but you know if you want it to look even vaguely neat then then grab something but as I say I mean a couple of rulers or something like that would do. Um, a couple of dead hamsters, you know, let them go you know really really rigid obviously and, and shave them or you'll you'll get fur in your butter. Um, the last thing is a bit of greaseproof paper to wrap it in. If you haven't got greaseproof paper don't feel I, I can't make butter obviously you can put it in cling film you can put it in a container um, put it in an old sock if you like um, but greaseproof is, is probably easiest to just make it on wrap it up and pop it in the fridge. Um, I'm sure you'll figure something out if I have to talk you through the alternatives to greaseproof you probably shouldn't be using a stand mixer anyway. So, uh, turning back to the mixer, what I did earlier was pop the cream 
into the mixer and I left it running for about five minutes. What I'm going to do in a second is uh, I'm going to turn it on because what you can't see and I can is that the butter is 99% done and I'll just show you the last few seconds. Now one thing I will say before I turn this on these things make a horrendous amount of noise. If you're watching this with an old person just warn them there's a loud noise coming. If the virus hasn't gone by now, we don't want them popping off because my video sends them over the edge, do we? So it's very noisy. Um, but what I'm, the reason I'm putting it on now, apart from to just finish the butter off, is to show you why you need this, the splatter guard, okay, on your food mixer, because what's happened at the moment in here and what's about to finish happening is the buttermilk, the liquid, is separating from the fat, which is the butter that you actually want. Um, you'll see in a second why the splatter guard is so important. Okay, do not forget to use this. So, I'm going to pop this on just for a few seconds, just let the butter finish off. So, you can see the splatter guard there, a um, bit of a mess with buttermilk. So, I'll open that up in a second. Uh, one thing I didn't mention is, uh, if you want to reduce the time it takes you to get to this point, take your cream out of the fridge 30 to 45 minutes before you actually want to churn it, because for some reason, when I, I don't understand the science, but when the um, cream is at more, more of a room temperature, um, it churns faster. Okay, don't understand why. Clearly, don't take it out too far ahead, or you'll um, well, you'll have rancid cream. Right. So now this is where, if you're me and you're obsessed with not making a mess, uh, even though we are in the smallest, oldest, and least renovated bit of the house, um, as you can see, um, then you have a cloth handy. Okay, because what I'm going to do now is take the buttermilk out of the equation put it in a container so Melinda can make scones later. Right, so this is the bit that I get really OCD-ish about. I hate having buttermilk go everywhere, but it kind of does, and there's not a lot I can do about it. So, there you can see we have buttermilk and we have butter. Now then, um, quick word at this point, if you wanted to, you could now scrape this butter off the uh, balloon whisk, and you can put it in the fridge. If you can, if you know you're going to eat it all in in the next 48 hours, don't do anything else now apart from salt it if you want to, and throw it in the fridge. If you want to be able to keep it two to two and a half weeks, you've got to go through all the other malarkey I'm about to go through. So first of all, taking off, uh, taking out sorry the buttermilk. So have yourself a cloth. Again, if, if you're not like me and you don't care about making a mess, then don't bother with the cloth. So, that comes off there, that goes on there, and we just drain this buttermilk. Now, if you're wondering what is buttermilk, it is, as you can see, all of the liquid that comes out of cream. It's very nice making scones with, very nice indeed. Now, uh, probably, you know, if you didn't taste it, I mean, it just tastes like buttery milk, funnily enough. I mean, you wouldn't want to make a milkshake out of it, be a bit sickly, but um, essentially, you know, um, very useful for buttermilk biscuits, scones, etc. So, nice byproduct. You know, if you go to Sainsbury's, that'll cost you a quid. So, you've got it for free. Now then, this is the next bit. We now need to do a few things with the butter we've made. So, first things first, we are straight over to the sink. Sorry, I've got to wipe that. That is driving me mad. There you go, so that's wiped. And we are over to the sink. Now, these next bits, to be honest, are tedious. Doesn't really matter how you frame it, they're tedious. But if you want your butter to last without going rancid, 
then you have to a remove as much of the remaining buttermilk that's still in it that you can't see and then b bizarrely uh you have to uh dry your butter off a bit because once you've washed it which is what i'm about to do to get the excess buttermilk out you've then got to dry it because it's soaking wet so okay that as i say is a finished product but you can see pooling up at the bottom there we've we've got buttermilk that we haven't we haven't dealt with yet so we need to get all that out now you can start to get it into some sort of a lump and then and this is really dull you wash it Now it usually takes about four changes of water in order to remove as much of the butter as you can. But basically push the butter around in the water, squeeze it, um, do it for as long as you've got patience really. But the longer you do it for, the longer your butter's going to last. So, you know, it's an investment. was James Martin I'd uh, I'd have a food technician doing this in the background for me but as you can see by my presenting skills I am not in the interim we just flashed in some um, collection of chili sauces so you can have a little look at what he usually has as um, staple products if you want any of the more specialized ones you can get them right so um by the wonder of iphone trickery um there we are with some washed butter so um that took about probably about five bowls of water actually to um to get it uh to this stage now um but as i said before it will last for about two to two and a half weeks in your fridge if it lasts that long and you, you just haven't eaten it um now the problem is you've got beautifully washed butter which is now soaking wet now the other problem that you're going to have is if you leave your butter too wet then the texture of it will break down it will be fairly unpleasant and again there's a chance it, it will go sort of rancid a bit quicker than you might like it to so you've now got to very tedious again dry your butter so as you can see if i just begin you're not going to be removing pints and pints of water doing this but you do need to try and get as much as you can out now it's not terribly scientific you push the butter if you me against the side of the bowl and every now and again you drain off about probably a teaspoon of water um this is one of the things that um there's there's like a you know a hundred how to make butter videos on youtube and they all say oh you can have butter in 10 minutes flat if you do it properly and you want your butter to last you can't okay it will take you about 15 to 20 minutes to actually make butter um which which is going to keep in the fridge so again rather like the last task do this for as long as you've got patience in my case normally not all that long put a bit of effort into uh trying to make sure that you get as reasonably speaking as much water out as you can you're never going to get everything out it's a bit like trying to take water out of spinach and go on forever technically and there'd still be some left in there okay that is about as much as i do have patience for pretty much okay last one i think there we go i could probably carry on but I'm just going to be rebellious and not. Now, this is the stage that um, you don't really want to forget. And that's popping in a little bit of salt. Or if you've got absolutely no regard for your heart and um, 
the rest of your body, possibly a lot of salt. Um, it's up to you. So I tend to go for, simply because we've got a five kilogram bag of it upstairs, um, a bit of fine salt. This is Himalayan pink salt. You can use anything you like. Don't use that awful free running table salt. It tastes weird. Um, about, about half a teaspoon ish. That was probably a bit much actually, so that'll do. About half a teaspoon suits us. Using the fine salt, that is your all pervasive salty flavour. Then for an occasional crunch of salt, and you can use mould and put it in with your fingers if you want, or leave it out completely, I grind a bit of coarse um, sea salt. Literally, rule of thumb, three grinds. Then the easiest thing to do this with, grab yourself a fork and mix it through. Nobody wants, you know, to come across a massive a wadge of salt in one mouthful. So mix it through your butter pretty well, turn it over, just sort of mix it through and probably don't suppose I need to show you how to mix butter with a fork. Right then, uh, I've turned this butter out onto the, um, the grease proof and now we just need to shape it. Now there's, there's no rules for this. Um, you could just roll it into a lock with your hands if you wanted to um, and stick it in the freezer. Um, yeah, it's up to you. This is also the point where if you want to, probably before you put it on the grease proof paper actually, you can add things to it like um, fresh herbs, dried herbs, chilli, you know, you name it really. If you want to flavour the butter, now is about the time to do it. So, um, literally just shape it up or to be honest if that will do you wrap it up and put it in the fridge like that up to you now the one thing i will say it's pretty warm in this kitchen and i've been working with this butter as you can see for a while and it is getting very very soft now this is going to happen you obviously get better off making butter in the winter in the autumn um, but you know it's kind of unavoidable that you're going to want some in the summer probably so what you can do at this point if, if it's really a nightmare to work with stick it in the fridge as it is for half an hour let it firm up bring it out and then shape it but I'm just going to kind of do my best to get this done as quickly as possible a couple of things about shaping it and I, I am no expert as you can see a couple of things um, do put some pressure on it, downward pressure on it a few times because as you can see there's lots of cracks in it. Now this is kind of what makes it homemade, gives it a bit of texture. You're not going to get it like that bright yellow, you know, obviously very sort of processed butter that's gone through an industrial process in a factory. You're not going to get that at home. Okay, it's going to look a bit rustic I suppose is the word. It's going to look a bit homemade. But do make sure you do apply some downward pressure to it a few times and try and just compact it so that it will cut nicely in the future. Now, most of the time, you actually just need one of these to shape it and your hand moving the paper around. But they're nearer to the end when you want to get it into an actual shape. Right, let's just get that a bit more square on the paper. Then you do need two. Okay, and literally just, you know, there you go. Block of butter. Keep going, again, for as long as you've got patience. It's my phrase of the day, that, isn't it? Um, just keep going. If you want to put patterns on it, feel free. Uh, it doesn't really do anything much for me, so I don't. Um, and that is about that. Um, and all I'd say is just sort of know when to stop. If you want to, you know, get it to look quite nice, then one way to, to actually get a, a reasonably nice finish I found on it is to just lightly brush over it. If you want to. Absolutely up to you. If you're looking at that and thinking it's absolutely the wrong shape, I wouldn't have done that. Well, you do yours your way. That is fine. The last thing I tend to do before I wrap it up you will notice there are some bits of moisture on the grease proof. You don't have to, but why not get rid of them? It's just, again, future proofing your butter for as long as possible. And that is butter done. Thanks very much indeed for um, watching and listening. 
and um, well, I, I just hope it wasn't too torturous for you. <laughs>